there's just something about the steam locomotive that makes it a marvel. The sight, sounds, and smell of one in action draw people of all ages to watch in awe. Once the backbone of intercontinental expansion, these iron giants have found new leases in life as tourist attractions. Some are static exhibits, others are active, and one of the best places to see active steam locomotives in the United States is the Strasburg Railroad in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. The Strasburg Railroad is the oldest operating railroad in the United States, dating back to its original 1832 charter. It started out as a Pennsylvania Railroad branch line, creating a connection between the town of Strasburg and nearby Lehman Place. The line saw some passenger and mostly freight activity for over 120 years. Activity began decreasing in the 1950s with the rise of trucks, and the railroad prepared to file for abandonment by 1957. Luckily, a group of avid rail fans saved the line and turned it into what would become one of the most famous heritage railroads in the United States. The tourist trains run for 45 minutes along the four and a half mile system through the beautiful farm-filled countryside of East Central Pennsylvania. Hundreds of thousands of people visit each year for the train rides and special events. We will be taking part in one of those events today. Twenty twenty marks the 60th anniversary of steam on the preserved Strasbourg line, and the railroad has organized a series of photo charters to celebrate. These charters were made specifically for enthusiastic railroad photographers, and will feature two longtime resident steam locomotives of the railroad. Join us as we go trackside along the road to paradise to witness some superb steam action in the fall in Steam Strikes Back. 60 years on the Strasbourg Railroad. Our day begins at the East Strasbourg Depot in the pre-dawn hours of the morning as we check in for the charter. In the yard, our co-starring locomotive, which we will see more of in a few minutes, is backing out onto the main with a freight train. We're all checked in, and we're about to board the four-car photographer train, in tow behind the star of today's event. And here she is! Number 90 is a 210O, built in 1924 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for the Great Western Railroad in Colorado, where she primarily hauled heavy trains of sugar beets, she was the largest engine on the railroad and could easily handle any load that the several smaller 280s couldn't. In the mid-1960s, after a few excursions in conjunction with the Colorado and Southern Railroad, her revenue career drew to a close. She was purchased by the Strasburg in 1967, where once again she was the biggest on the line and where she has become an icon of preserved steam. Today, number 90 wears the paint scheme she was given in her first year on the Strasbourg, complete with white walls, pinstripes, gold lettering, red number plate, and, of course, the famous retro egg logo on the tender. This paint scheme helps turn the clock back to the railroad's earliest days. The participants are all lined up in a field adjacent to the tracks, a few hundred yards east of Paradise Lane. 90 is backing up about half a mile down the line towards Groundhog Cut, before coming back up the track 
past the photo line for the first of many runbys here. Participants are allowed to move around in between runbys to get a variety of shots in the same location.
number 90 has gone further down this time to give clearance for the other train running on this charter, a vintage freight train hauled by former Canadian National 260 number 89. This little mogul was built in 1910 by the Canadian Locomotive Company in Kingston, Ontario. Throughout her career, she primarily pulled passenger services on branch lines with gentle grades. Retired by 1961, she was purchased by F. Nelson Blount, founder of Steamtown USA, and she pulled tourist trains on the Green Mountain Railroad in Bellows Falls, Vermont. She was sold to the Strasbourg Railroad in 1972. Eighty-nine's train is made up of a hodgepodge of old-fashioned freight cars that come from several different railroads. Five wooden box cars, two hopper cars, a single dome tank car, and a caboose. These cars, lovingly maintained by the Strasbourg shops, help create an image from a long time ago each time they're brought out for a charter. After performing two run-bys, the freight train clears the line, allowing for more scenes with number 90 and her passenger cars.
With the sun risen, it's time to head to another location. The train drops us off at the dirt road crossing between Black Horse Road and Lehman Place, a favorite spot for photographers on previous Strasbourg charters.
A quick walk up the line brings us up the bank near Black Horse Cemetery, just down the tracks from the crossing. Number 90 idles between the rows of trees before meeting us for pickup. We board the train and ride down to Lehman Place, at the interchange with the former Pennsylvania Railroad's Keystone Corridor, now owned by Norfolk Southern. Here we have some side-by-side -side photo ops with both locomotives. Number 90 looks stunning in her retro livery representing Strasbourg's early days and newly formed identity as the first tourist railroad in the United States. Number 89 is in her 1950s CNR look and represents the current Strasbourg Railroad which aims for historical accuracy on all their locomotives, not without its own touches here and there. Around 10.18 a.m., old meets new, as an Amtrak local rapidly approaches our photo line and is greeted with a chorus of whistles. We're nearing the end of the morning charter, and we have to clear the line for the regular 11 o'clock passenger train. The final location of this session will be up in the Strasbourg yard. Number 90 drops us off and backs up for a quick run by before moving into the siding. Number 89 will follow suit.
with the photo trains out of the way. The regular train is clear to depart. Norfolk and Western M Class 480, number 475, is on the point. Give them the old scenic tour of the freight yard. 475 was built by Baldwin in 1906. One of 125 480s built for the NW that year for mainline freight trains, although they would later be reassigned to mixed traffic on branch lines with the arrival of more powerful locomotives by the late 1920s. 475 served the NW for half a century before being retired in 1956. After sitting in a scrapyard until 1980 and moving between several storage locations, she was purchased by the Strasbourg Railroad in 1991 and was restored to operational condition in 1993. While the staff prepare for the next photo session at noon, we'll take a look around the Strasbourg area. The East Strasbourg Yard had been little more than a field during the early days of the railroad, but it has grown over the past few decades, due in no small part to the railroad's expanding freight business. Most of the structures in the yard were built during the tourist era, like the engine house, built in the 1960s to accommodate the expanding fleet of steam locomotives. It can store as many as four active steamers at a time. The mechanical shop was built in the 1970s. Several major restoration projects are being worked on inside, including the slow restoration of number 7312 a 1908-built Baldwin 060 of CN Heritage, the first steam locomotive purchased by the Strasbourg for tourist trains. Around the station, one can visit one of the several food vendors, stores, or gift shops, all of which were constructed during the 1980s and 90s. The station itself is made up of the original ticket booth from the late 19th century, and the 1882-built depot originally located in East Petersburg, relocated in 1960. Another relocated structure is the J Tower, constructed in 1885 at Lemoyne Junction. Moved to the west end of the Strasbourg Yard in the 1980s, it is used to control the switches around the station. In addition to the three steam locomotives we've seen, Strasbourg also rosters former Brooklyn East District Terminal Railroad No. 15, a 1917-built 060 Porter tank, rebuilt to resemble Thomas the Tank Engine, for use on Day Out with Thomas events. Non-steam-powered residents include former New York Central SW8 No. 8618, built by EMD in 1952, Former Lancaster, Oxford, and Southern Doodlebug No. 10, built in 1915 by the Sanders Machine Shop, and No. 1, a gasoline-powered 20-tonner built by Plymouth in 1926, the last remaining locomotive of the pre-tourist era Strasbourg Railroad. The railroad boasts an impressive roster of beautifully restored wooden passenger cars that make up the daily steam-hauled tourist trains. There are over a dozen coaches, four open-air cars, two lounge cars, a dining car, and a parlor car. Two steel business cars are also used on tourist trains, one from the Pennsylvania Railroad and one from the Philadelphia and Reading. Several other wooden passenger cars are awaiting restoration 
parked on the portion of track beyond the old Strasburg road crossing, protected by a corrugated steel cocoon. This helps prevent wood rot and decreases the accumulation of mold, making future work much easier. Right across the street from the station is the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. We did not go inside of the museum during our visit, but we were able to see a few pieces of the outdoor collection from across the way, including two ex Pensy steamers in need of major cosmetic work. Strasbourg itself is a beautiful town, and we had to take a stroll down Main Street to admire the churches, homes, and small businesses along the way. Noon marks the start of the second and final session of the day. The locomotives have swapped trains, so we will now see number 90 with the vintage freight consist and number 89 with the passenger cars. Returning to the bank at Carpenters, both trains will back up about three quarters of a mile away, near the farm crossing, before highballing towards the bank. During the afternoon session, the staff have to work around regularly scheduled trains. This made for some difficulties, but gave us ample opportunity to see some action from the 475 and her 10-car train.
Moving on, we are now adjacent to the Esben Shade Road Crossing by Groundhog Cut. The field has been harvested recently, and we've been granted permission to set up a photo line here. In addition to the freight train, the next few scenes will also feature two men and two women of the Lancaster County Vintage Association, dressed in 1950s style clothing. Along with a blue 1956 Cadillac DeVille that has been provided for the charter, the stage is set for a perfect scene right out of the twilight of the Age of Steam.
After several run-bys at the crossing, 90 backs up to the Cherry Hill siding to clear the way for the approaching 2.30 train. 89 can be seen in the background as she follows from a distance. Cherry Hill is our next location, and we'll take advantage of the short double track portion. Four seventy five rolls through on the return portion of the two thirty service. Once the line is clear, 89 moves into position by the passenger stop at Groff's Grove. In the summer months, trains will often drop off passengers at Groff's Grove to picnic and pick them up on a later service. Today, the location makes for some good side-by-side -side photo ops. The side of the tracks is riddled with twigs and overgrowth, so the participants and organizers pitch in to clear up the embankment to make for some better shots for the upcoming run -bites. In another classic scene of a bygone era, the passenger train sits at the small station, with onlookers standing by in admiration, while the freight train passes by on the other track.
Plans of a double-header run-by were discussed at the Grove, but ultimately, we were nearing the end of our session and would soon have to clear the line for the Jesse James train robbery excursion. It was decided to bring the charter trains back to East Strasbourg, but more photo ops were arranged with the locomotives and the folks from the Lancaster County Vintage Society. Ninety heads out first, while we follow on board 89's passenger train. While we didn't get to see a double header, the day was not one wasted. The weather was perfect, we saw plenty of steam action at a variety of venues, and couldn't be more satisfied. Here are the final shots of the day, with the trains parked in the yard as the light of day slowly begins to subside. The Strasbourg Railroad is a class act, and if you ever get an opportunity to participate in a photo charter, or even one of the regular tourist trains, take it. You won't be disappointed. As the session draws to a close, we'd like to thank director Chris Pollock, Pete Laro of Laro Productions, and all the Strasbourg staff on location for making these events possible. We hope you've enjoyed Steam Strikes Back, 60 years on the Strasbourg Railroad.